So number 17 then, the last question in the 2017 Mathematics and Mechanics, 11 marks this time. Back to a body on an inclined plane here. What does it say? A body of mass 12 kilograms is moving down a rough plane, so it's got some friction, unknown coefficient here. At an angle of theta, it doesn't tell you what it is, but it tells you the sign of it. That's even better, in fact. As it passes a point A, its speed is 5 metres per second down the plane. At a point B further on, its speed's increased to 10 metres per second. Show that this distance AB is given by this expression here. Well, there's two ways to do that. You can use forces and the equations of motion, or you can use energy, work energy, conservation of energy. Now, this is actually going to be quite a lengthy question, so I think I'll just do it forces, equations of motion way. So let's start off with this. Where's this body A? This body A, I'll just put it down as a particle, has got these forces acting on it. It's got its weight, it's got the normal reaction to the plane, and if it's moving down, there'll be a force of friction acting back up. So the obvious choice of a coordinate system would be parallel and perpendicular to the plane, which makes W the only one that doesn't conform to that. W is going to be the squinty one. So let's just sort out what W would look like. So if that's the weight, and I want to resolve it into the directions parallel and perpendicular, well, there's the perpendicular, there's the parallel. And if that's the slope, that's the angle theta, that's not, that's it there. Well, ready to go then. Just reiterate that coordinate system. I'm going for down the slope and perpendicular. So that's perpendicular and that's parallel. You could call them X and Y if you liked. I'm just going to stick with that. Now you just sum the forces in both directions. Perpendicular first of all. So what are the sum of the forces perpendicular to the plane? Well, if I'm taking my direction as upwards, I've got N, and then there's the component of the weight perpendicular, which is going down the way, of course. So that will be W, and it's the side next to the angle, so it's W cos theta. Now, you don't know the angle theta. Well, you can quite easily get it. But you know the sine of theta, so you can reconstruct the little triangle. Maybe we'll just pop in here. Here's the theta triangle. The sine is 3 upon 4. So the cosine will be 16 take away 9 root 7. So the cosine is root 7 upon 4. Well, we'll just pop that in then. We'll just... Oh, didn't finish that off, of course. The sum of the forces perpendicular to the plane comes to this. And of course, it's not moving at all into the plane. So the sum of those forces is 0. That means that n is going to be w cos theta. Now w will be mg. Now the weight's 12, so that's 12g, and the cosine of theta is root 7 upon 4. So I'll just tidy that up into 3 root 7g, because you can see you're not going to be evaluating anything, you'll be keeping all your constants in here. Now doing that, for resolving the forces perpendicular to the slope, you get the first mark. Now, immediately upon doing that, that means you get the force of friction. The force of friction will be mu n. So that will be 3 root 7 mu g. Now, that mark's not mentioned at all anywhere. But that's a critical part. Now, resolve the forces parallel to the slope. So what's happening to the slope? Remember, the direction I've got is downwards. So acting downwards, I've got the component of the weight. So that's W sine theta. Acting upwards, you've got the force of friction, and that's all there is acting against W. And the force of friction here is 3 root 7 mu g. And of course, that's unbalanced because it's moving, it's accelerating down, the speed's increasing, so that's going to give mass times acceleration. We're just doing this bit first of all, and that's where the mark popped in for doing mu times the normal reaction to the block. Now, tidy that lot up. So what have we got? Well, W, that's mg, and that was 12, so that's 12g. The sine of theta was 3 quarters. Minus, that's already been tidied up, 3 root 7 mu g. M, that was 12. A, I don't know. And that's going to be the whole point of this, finding A. Now, getting to that stage is the next mark. 
Now I just need to rearrange that to read A equals. I maybe should have tidied that up first of all. 4 into 12 goes 3. 3 threes are 9. So that means you've got A equals this bit tidied up divided by 12. I'll put it in just now. There's a common factor of G. There's other common factors as well. But I'll just put this in first of all. I've got a 9 here times the G and I've got a 3 root 7 mu times the G. Common factor of 3 throughout. So A equals 3 minus root 7 mu all over 4. Don't forget the G. You'd have thought that might have been worth the mark. Now it's just a case of, now that you've got an expression for the acceleration, you just need an appropriate formula that'll connect A with the initial velocity, the final velocity, and the distance between them. And that's going to be V squared equals U squared plus 2AS. In fact, just realising that you're going to use that or choose that is the fourth mark. Now it's just a case of putting everything in. I'll have to shove that all up there to get a bit more room just to finish this off. We've got all the figures here. Final speed was 10. Initial speed was 5. 2 is 2. A is this. 3 minus root 7 mu times g all over 4. And S is the distance AB. You could call it X, but I'll just call it AB. Well, there's only one mark left, so I've just got to finish this lot off then. So... 100 minus 25 is 75. I'm just going to leave AB in this side and move everything over. So AB equals, there's a 75. Now the 4 can go across and multiply. The 2 can go across and divide. Along with the 3 minus root 7 mu g. Now you're almost there, it's just 2 into 4 goes 2. 2 times 75 is 150, so you've got 150 over 3 minus root 7 mu, lots of g, for the distance AB, as required for the last mark. Now part B. On reaching 10 metres per second, a horizontal force of 260 newtons is applied thereby breaking the body and forcing it to come to a stop in half the distance AB. If that's the case, calculate the value of the coefficient of friction to two significant figures for the remaining six marks. Well, what have we got this time? If that's the body at B, there's the weight acting on it, the horizontal force of 260 acting on it, the normal reaction, which I'll call N, and the force of friction. Now, already had expressions for that, but I'll just put it down again. So, if I'm going to use the same coordinate system, which is perpendicular and parallel, call it X and Y if you like, then these two need to be resolved into it because they are squint to it. So, this horizontal one then, going perpendicular and parallel, means if that's 260, then with that being the angle theta, the angle theta's in there. Same with the weight. If that's the weight, then going perpendicular and then parallel. If that's the slope of theta, that's not, then that's it up there. Right, now you're just ready to go. Same as before. Some of the forces perpendicular. Usually you start with that, first of all, because that's the one that's going to give you the force of friction. For some reason, the marking scheme, they've got it the other way around. The parallel one first, then the perpendicular one. Right. Perpendicular. Now this time there's three forces acting perpendicular. If that's my positive direction, N's all there. Part of W's acting against it, and it's this part here. Next to the angle, that's the cos, minus W cos theta. And for that horizontal force, this portion's acting against it, opposite that, so that's the sine. So also minus... 260 sine theta. And that all comes to zero because it's not sinking into the slope. Now that's worth a mark. But then I would then finish that off. So N equals, taking them across, the weight was 12. So that's 12G and the cosine of the angle will be root 7 upon 4 times root 7 upon 4. Taking that across as well, plus 260 times and the sine was 3 quarters. 
and we'll just tidy that up again. So that equals 4 to the 12 goes 3. So there's that 3 root 7g, which you could have just put in straight away if you had the working shown above there, but I've rubbed it all out. And this part's going to be 65, 18, 195. No marks for that. But the point of that was you can now get the force of friction. And the force of friction will be mu times that. It'll be mu times 3 root 7g plus 195. I would have had that as a mark. Now, some of the forces parallel to the slope. Well, parallel, taking the direction is down. The only component down is the weight one, opposite angle, that's sine. So that's W sine theta. Opposing that, you've got this portion of the 260 next to the angle, 260 cos theta. And also opposing it is the force of friction, which is this mu times 3 root 7g plus 195. Whoops. And that's not balanced because it is moving, so that equals ma. That's worth a mark. Let's get rid of that now. Well, that was just a case of tidy that up as before to get an expression for A so you can use the same motion equation. So M was 12, so you've got 12A equals, and it's just a case of go through all the bits again. Wait, that's 12G times sine is 3 quarters, minus 260 times and cos is root 7 upon 4, minus, and that's already there, 3 root 7g plus 195. Now, since you've just defined the coefficient of friction to two significant figures, there's not much point carrying all these exact values anymore. It's just become too cumbersome. You may as well just replace them all with decimals at this point. So, 88.2. 171.974. I'll just take three decimal places. 272.785. Now that second mark I put in was actually the first mark they put in because then they incorporated the third mark as that expression, putting the friction into it. So I'll put that there as well, putting the friction into it. But I'm still not going to get the next mark until I get an ex a value for this A. So that means adding them and dividing by 12. Negative 6.981, I'll put down. Minus 22.732, and I forgot to be mu, mu. Now that you've got A, you can then pop it into V squared equals U squared plus 2AS to find the value of this eventually. But the mark's not quite just for using that again, it's for using that with, of course, S being this time half of that distance. Need to clear that, unfortunately, to get more room. So there was the equation. This mark's just waiting for it once you've put in appropriate values. So you've got final velocity, 0. I'll put 0 squared. Initial velocity, 10. 2 times, A is this, negative 6.981 minus 22.732, lots of mu. And if it does it in half the distance, it's going to be then times... Half that would make that a 75 over 3 minus root 7 mu g. Now you get the mark. There's two marks left, basically for just the arithmetic now. So you need to simplify this bundle of numbers. So the step would be, I'll take that over to this side as minus 100, thereby allowing me to take this across to multiply it, minus 100 times 3 minus root 7 mu g leaving this pile here. And whilst that's there, I may as well just multiply those two parts at least. So that's that 150 back again, times negative 6.981 minus 22.732 mu. And in fact, you're getting a mark just for doing that part. Now you've got to multiply all this out, switch them about, and finally divide to get the value of mu. Maybe to save just a little bit. Those factors there could go down slightly. I can knock that down to a 2 and knock that down to a 3. And a couple of buttons less to press. So that first one will be minus 58.8. Next part will be plus 
857 I'll put down. Here we're going to have minus 20.943 and minus 68.196 mu. And I forgot to put that mu in there. Now put the mu's on this side and the numbers on that side. That gives you 120.053 mu. And that gives you 37.857. Almost there. No, it's just a case of take that cross and divide. And you get, unless there's a mistake in the figures there, but I'm not going to go back and check it. 3, 1, 5, 3, and so on. But it's said to two significant figures, so 0 0.32. Finally, for the last mark. That was quite a bit of arithmetic in that last part. That took ages. That took as much as the whole of the rest of the question, just about. Maybe they put that in just to keep you busy at the end, though. To stop you doodling on your paper if you get bored.